Hello. So I have this little vintage boat trailer here. Uh, it's a small boat. It's 12 feet long. Trailer isn't much longer than the boat. The problem I'm having is I'm tired of carrying around a jack stand to put this thing on. You know, that's just silly. So I want, I don't want a little trailer wheel because I mean, let's be honest, those little trailer jacks kind of kind of suck. The wheel never really works. You wind up just kicking the wheel in the direction you want it to kind of roll and you push and you hope for the best. Meanwhile, the slop on the jack just makes the, the tongue go over. They, they work, but I mean, there's not, they're not fun. So when you have a small trailer with, you know, a 30 pound tongue weight, you really don't, at least I don't think I really need a trailer jack. So what I was looking for was a little, a little kickstand kind of thing that folds down and holds the trailer up for me. That, that's ideal. I looked around on the internet and I found this one. It's a, uh, it's a Reese quick stand. Best I can tell is those things were made in the 80s and that's probably it. I found a patent number. The patent expired due to lack of maintenance, I think, in 93. So, you know, these, these jacks are 30 years old now. Uh, yeah, not that common. So I then did some more digging because I used to have a little uh, little enclosed trailer. And in the rear, it had these little, uh, little I don't know, support bars. And reading the reviews on those, they're flimsy and they're crappy. And the thing is, they're made to be welded on or bolted on from underneath. And they don't really, not really going to work on a trailer tongue unless you weld it. But I don't want to weld it. So, yeah. And if you read the reviews, they all say they're flimsy and crappy. So that's no better than my, my trailer jack. So really, what I really want is that Reese uh, quick stand. Long discontinued. I called them to find out when it was discontinued for this video, and I'm uh, still waiting for a call back. You know, you call them, and after being on hold and the phone ringing forever, you go to a voicemail. Now, I don't think I'm getting an answer. Anyway, so it's discontinued, so I want to try to make one. So let's jump right into it. So I have a 6-inch wide, 8-inch bar stock, flat stock. Uh, this is 4 feet long. Not that that matters. I'm going to go... I'm going to make the C-channel first, the part that actually attaches to the trailer, so it'll be shaped like that. It'll be three and three quarters, I guess, deep, five inches wide, and then three and three quarters, and then cut. Uh, I'm going to try torch bending this first. I don't have a bender or a break or any of that stuff. I'm going to try it with the torch. That doesn't work. I'm just going to cut three and three quarters off and then weld it. I don't know. We'll see how this goes. All right. Got my metal setup or my bending setup ready. Got my torch. Like I said, I don't know how well this is going to work. So this is just plan B, plan A rather. Heat it up, hammer it. Hopefully my line stays there. I'm a quarter inch away from those two plates, these steel plates right here. Hopefully it'll bend right in that line, but we will see. And I am, in fact, torching line off. That's okay. cut that off previously it was like that cutting on the the downside so in theory if I just do this 
move it in the same quarter inch, and bend that down and around, that should wind up with the same result. So mark out my quarter inch, if I can. A little hard to work with these gloves, you know? This is going to be a little trickier to bend, I think. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think I'm going to have to like maybe heat it up from underneath and get down there with the wrench to pull it down. I don't know. Okay, it has cooled to the touch, and you know what? I'm happy I uh, bent it. Welding it would have looked a little on the homemade side, but it would have been quicker. But I don't know. This uh, this turned out pretty good. It's decently flat. They're about equal. Sits okay, and it's it's a little little off on the right angle. Like this could be towing just a little bit. But it's, I would say it's perfectly acceptable. So yeah, that's uh, where we're at. I made a stencil. A piece of paper, all of my dimensions on it. I know I probably should have used uh, you know, a pencil and could have seen it a little easier, in case you were making one. Anywho, so. These may not be equal. I don't care if they are. The only thing I care, the, I'm, well, what I'm going to do for a fixed dimension, if you will, is just put it to the back on both sides. And this is going to be where all of my holes are going. Now I won't have all the same holes on the other side. And then one side really needs them. So there's my transfer. So now I'll just take this, put it over here. See what I did? So it transfers the holes over. Line it to the back. And make some holes. Okay. I made one and then screwed it up. What I screwed up were all of the hole locations on the side plate. Not that I screwed up, I did. But what I screwed up was that I forgot that I wasn't using one inch C-channel. I'm gonna be wind up using one and a quarter, which threw everything off. So, I had to make a new one. New one, I bent differently, so I have a nice clean finish. What I did was I cut this down to 13 inches. I measured in from each side, so side one, four inches, and made a mark. I then used my calipers. And I came in 0 0.68 inches, so I came in from my 4 inch and made a mark on both sides. I then clamped it down, and that's where I did the bend, resulting in my almost 5 inch wide u -turn. Now it's not quite 5 inches wide, it's more like 4.5, but yeah, good enough. The original one would have been 5 inches wide, 4 inches up. So this one's a little deeper than normal. But I'm okay with it. Actually, I don't know if I am. Maybe I will trim it down. Yeah, that looks better, I think. Alright, I'm going to determine, for no reason at all, that this is the front. And a poor attempt at an arrow. So that's the front. I'm going to determine where this is going to pivot. Should probably be about there. Give it enough room to come up and over. And I don't really care about angle it goes down on, so let's just call it right there. 
depth is a little hard to see on a camera, so slid that out of the way. Uh, hold on. Okay, our kickstand stop is going to be a little half inch piece of steel. Probably about there. The original would have came down three quarters of an inch. Yeah, up three quarters of an inch. Up and in three quarters of an inch, putting us right there. So that's where our steel stop is going to go. So then we need to guesstimate ourselves an angle we want this thing on. Probably call it right about there. Now everything is getting half inch hardware. Just so you know. Yeah, I think right there looks like a good angle. Uh, that comes up three quarters. Right there. So. Let's give ourselves a scribe line. And we'll put our detent right about there. So that will be our bottom detent. And our top detent will also come in three quarters of an inch. Now I don't necessarily think I want it all the way up. So I think I'll come down just a pinch right there. And I have a center there and a center there. Make a corner. So that's where our holes are all going. Our kickstand mount, our bottom detent, and our tilted raised up detent. Yeah, that should do it. So I need to transfer that to the other side and we'll be good. All right, I drew some ovals out that are gonna be the top mounts. The top mounts are gonna be 3 8 bolts. Everything else is gonna be half inch hole. I have a 3 8 drill bit. Gonna kinda of try to center this. I'm not trying to go all the way through. Just kind of center where my slots are going to be. Alright, I have reached my 3 8 hole size, so I'm going to stop drilling the top and just do the sides now. I'm going to keep working my way up all the way to half inch, where I will then stop. You're wondering, I'm going in eighth inch increments. So give a little bit more life out of my drill bits. And since I don't need to do the bottoms anymore, I'm going to clamp it. Well, yeah, I'll clamp it down like this and then just drill from both sides. 
All right, got to do some precision grinding to make these holes and slots for my mounting bolts. Yeah, I uh, I royally screwed this one up. So I ran a weld beam down the side and then filed it down. While I was there, you know, I cleaned up all the other grinder marks. Probably should have used a Dremel or maybe even just drilled a bunch of holes in it. And then filed it. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Our bolts fit. It'll work. This one's still a little sloppy, but good enough. Okay, this is the passenger side of the trailer. This is where our detents are going to hold our bar or leg down or up. So these, I need to square off these holes, again, for our detents. I didn't have a square file, so I had to go hunt one down. Let me tell you, a square file isn't, isn't everywhere. You would think it would be, but nope. Three hardware stores I checked didn't have it, and that little tool store did. Yeah, that sucks. Anyway, so I'm just going to file these square. Should only take a couple hours. And then, uh, yeah, back to putting this thing together. All right, I got myself this little piece of steel. It's half inch around. And I have just shy of three quarters of an inch sticking out on both sides. It's actually uh, 0.70 if you're curious. So I'm going to... Weld that into place, and our bottom will be done. All right, last thing to do here is to round the edges. They, uh, well, no factory is going to leave a sharp edge like that. Now, as a person, you'd want to round it to look better, but I'm trying to make this thing look like it's a factory-made little piece. Factories are cheap. I think when they do their uh, tooling, well, it would have been a stamped piece, right? So I think when they do tooling for stamped steel, rounding it's going to cost more than just cutting a, a square off. So I'm going to come in about three eighths of an inch or so, maybe a seven sixteenths. Yeah, I don't know, around there. And I'm just going to uh, make those two marks meet for a nice little square or a nice little triangle cut and that'll finish off our uh, our bottom all right I had to, well, I didn't have to, but since I ground down the top, that looks ugly in the picture. It, it ain't got these dents on it in person. I guess scra sanding scratches. I don't know. Anyway, since I used my flap disc to clean up the top, I also got off all the mill scale, which I also then had to do the sides to make sure it all matched. But anyway, I uh, stripped off the mill scale as you're supposed to do before you paint it. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to paint it. Now, full disclosure, the factory one would have been galvanized, but I'm not about to go send this off to be galvanized. Paint will be fine. If you live on the East Coast or anywhere near an ocean or wetlands, you might want to consider it. If you're in the Arizona, or Nevada, or New Mexico desert, yeah. Leave it like that, really. But anyway, I'm going to paint it uh, white to match the other stuff on my trailer. Now, obviously you're supposed to primer it first, which I did. You just didn't see it. So, uh, it's clear primer. Yeah. All right. What I have here is a piece of one and a quarter by half inch C-channel. Now, this was cut, so it doesn't look that good. What about this side? Yeah. So that's what we're dealing with. I want an inch. My metal shop didn't have an inch. They only had an inch and a quarter. I would have had a special order 
one inch and I didn't want to go through that whole thing. So I got one and a quarter. If you're watching this video and you like what you see, and you're gonna make your own, you really want one inch by half inch C-channel. The hardware will just lock into the C-channel. You won't have the problems that I think I'm gonna have, but eh, that's for later, you'll see. All right, I'm gonna, got the middle marked six inches over two lines. That's where my bend is gonna come up to form my kickstand. So let's get to it. I re-bent them because I needed the tops to line up. One was kind of over that way and the other was opposite. So they're nice and aligned now. So we're good. Okay, the only thing left to do now that the parts are all painted is to make the top brackets. Now, I think they would have used a six inch square with each end kind of bent up a little bit to form basically, basically this, only, you know, as wide as this is, so six inches. Anyway, um, I don't I don't see the reason to do that. So I'm going to take a page out of the uh, trailer tongue jack playbook and just use two uh, two brackets. So I'm going to put slots in the uh, yeah. I'm going to try to put slots in those just like I did here. Hopefully nicer since this will be on top, but we'll see. So I'll find the middle, make some slots, and take it from there. Well, that was fun. So I just gotta make another one now and then uh, paint them. All right, let's get this thing put together. Uh, I put a bend in the top where they straighten out. I didn't show that on film because it took forever because it was basically bend, check, bend, check, bend, check, bend, check. It was, it was a nightmare. So anyway, that's, that's, that's what I got. Now hopefully I can do this without screwing my paint up too much. We will see. Let me talk about the detent for a second. The reason we have holes on this side is because that's what the factory did. I think they did that to put a little, little pyramid where I have these square holes. I think they would have came in from this side, you know, in a press, and press this metal down to form it into a little pyramid. I can't reproduce that. I mean, I might be able to. I could probably, like, get a punch and shape it, the end of it into a pyramid, heat it up with a torch and just kind of hammer it. But I didn't... I didn't want to go through all that. So the square bolts are to hold a carriage bolt, which will form the detent. Or make a little area that's got to pass over, if you will. Now, that half-inch bolt was never made to go into a piece of quarter inch material. So I whipped myself up a carriage bolt washer, which may work, may not. Also, what I think I'm gonna do to increase the detent is put the washer back there and then put the carriage bolt in there. That, that should work, we'll see. First thing to do is to slide this together. I'm going to try this cardboard, see if that'll work. Like I said, I don't want to screw my paint up. 
I mean, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, you know. All right, so working pretty good. I put a half inch hole in here already, just in case you're curious. So I just gotta line it up. We'll see. Yeah, around there somewhere. Now a factory would have used some nylon washers between the base and the kickstand. I don't have those, but I do have, well, I couldn't find them at the hardware store, but I did find some of these oil light bronze uh, bearings. So I'm gonna use those instead. It should work fine. So let's slide this out. Slide this in. So this is the detent side. So what I have here is a bolt, nylon lock nut, and a pretty pretty good spring that fit over the half inch thing. Now, like I said earlier, tightening this down is gonna kind of suck. So that side's in. Now it's this side. And that is basically what we got. I gotta get my spring in there still. Back that out. Get my spring in there. Put that on. I also have a shorter bolt here in case I need to get more spring tension, but I didn't put it on because it didn't look didn't look easy to force that spring together. So now I got to figure out a way to tighten that down. I don't think a socket is going to fit in that channel. Just barely. I meant to buy myself a, a cheap socket and grind off the sides, but I forgot up until moments ago. So I'm going to try to hold it into the box inner inch. We'll see. I mean, it might work. be here all day. I might need to go tighter on that spring, but we'll see. So now it's time for the detents. I don't know if I'm going to I mean, that might work. It might be too much. But if I put it without the washer, yeah, that looks a lot better, to be honest. I'm going to do that. So I'll put my washer there. And let's just hope it reaches all the way down. You know what? I'm going to put a normal nut on here so I don't have to fight with the nylon walk nut. Now, right, let's see if this works. Fit in the detent. It slides over pretty easily. I think the weight of get going down the road, it would just fall over. So, more spring tension. Well, I got both detents on. Part of me is tempted to cut the backs of the nuts off here, but I don't care. Also, this is the shortest half inch carriage bolt the hardware store had. In case you're wondering. Okay, the brackets can go either way up or down. Eh. I don't care which way. The spare tire, if you wanted to mount it just like in the picture I showed you, that's what that hole there would be. You'd mount it down with a bolt through the center to runs up so you could bolt the spare tire down to the top. I put it in there for, I don't know, just cause to show you guys, I guess. But I don't plan on putting a spare tire right there. So I'm not gonna, not gonna do it, but should this thing work out quite well, I 
and wind up on a different trailer or something. I figured I would put that hole in there now. I forgot to get 3 8 washers, so I went around the garage and got whatever hardware I could find. So that's where we are on our washer status. Having those slots in the top make this adjustable. I'm going to run the bolts in from the top. That way we don't see the nuts. Might give it a cleaner, slightly cleaner look. And did I lose a carriage bolt? Probably. Alright, let me go find it. Yeah, right about there. Messed my paint up a little bit, but that's alright. Well, it's on there. Let's see if the detent works. It does. I don't think it's going to fall off down the road. We'll find out. Let's put it down and see if it can hold up a boat. You know what? That's pretty solid. <laughs> I mean, it rocks a little bit, but I mean, I'm pushing down and forward. It doesn't feel like it's going to break. The boat is just a little bit past level, so when and if it rains, it'll just run up the back of the boat. I'm not using my jack stand anymore. All in all, that ain't bad. Now, I, I won't be putting the spare tire here just because there's, there's just no room. It'd be just too close. I just wanted to stand. Not bad. Let's go, uh, let's go drive around and see if it falls down. You know, this little stand, not too bad. Uh, it's it's pretty neat. You, you don't see them. Okay, granted, there may be a reason for that. It's it's easy and quick to deploy. It feels like it's holding it just fine. It, obviously, it didn't fall uh, going down the road. Now, even if it did, right, since it'd be dragging backwards, you're going to hear it. The problem, I suppose, would be if it fell down and it's dragging down the road and then you backed up. You might have a little mess on your hands at that point. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Now, it could be better. Oops. If, I, if these were straighter and closer, it'd probably hold on those detents a little better. But for the most part, you know what? I like it. And it was pretty fun to make. If you think about it, this is a 30-plus-year-old dead product that good luck at getting one. And you know, I, I've recreated it with common tools that I've had here in the garage. I would I would compare this to like, maybe f finding fossilized mosquitoes and extracting dino DNA. If you like this video and you like my stand, um, and you're gonna make one, go ahead and email me photos of it. I would, uh, I'll put them on the end of the video, like maybe as like a little, what they call it, slideshow of different stands that people have made. That might be fun. 
And I'd like to see others' inspiration of it, too, and see what kind of things they can make. Yeah, anywho. All right, everybody. I'm off. See you later.